Welcome to Progressive Retail. I'm your host, Corey Mosley. Most dealers would agree that it takes more to sell cars today than it did just a few years ago. The constant need to add technology and adapt to consumer behavior leaves many dealers wondering what widgets, plugins, apps, and game changers are really making a difference in their business. One technology segment to mention is the improving of vehicle merchandising and its impact on enhancing the customer experience. One company focused on delivering on this is New York-based technology company, SpinCar. Joining me today is their Vice President of Sales, Bruce O'Brien. Bruce, thanks for joining the show today. Oh, thank you so much, Corey. Now, you're not new to me. You're not, you know, for, you're a first time guest of the show, yep. but we go probably back at least a decade or, or so. If not more, right? yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, so we do know each other, but you've kind of got a, as James Brown would say, Papa got a brand new bag. <laughs> yeah, you know, we right. worked together at a, at a couple other companies. But yep, yep. Um, today, you know, I've got you on talking about merchandising and vehicle merchandising and sure. kind of the impact of that and the importance in the marketplace. Yep. And now you're with a company called SpinCar. That's right. Yep. You know, now, what is SpinCar? Sure. SpinCar is designed, first and foremost, to present a better buying experience to the customer. If you think about it, you go to the average VDP on a dealership's website, and it's a bunch of pictures. Mm. But what SpinCar does is we have technology now which can take those pictures and make them into a 360-degree walk-around. Now, let me ask you about that. Now, sure. that's not new technology. I mean, the idea of doing that, you sure. know, we talked off camera for a minute, there are companies who have done that kind of 3D effect. What makes this different and kind of why is it important to the dealer? Sure, so what makes it different is we developed a spin car app about a year and a half ago. And what that allows the dealership to do is to literally walk around the car. Mm. And so now that customer has a totally immersive feeling. We also use VR technology, which allows that customer on their smartphone mm. to move the smartphone around and be able to see the interior, look up, look down. We use a special camera inside the car, which is a 360 degree capture camera. So now that customer, when they click on the door and they open the door, it's like they're sitting right inside the car. They can look in the back seat, front seat. Now, thinking about merchandising, what are some of the mistakes, some of the common mistakes that dealers make when it comes to merchandising and when it comes to photos? You know, we've sure. all kind of been, we've, a lot of us over the years been to the workshops, you know, the left angle and turn the headlights on. But what, what are some of the mistakes dealers that are making that you're seeing um, that, that, you know, they need to be aware of. I wouldn't say it's more mistakes, I would say it's complacency. The challenge is, is everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone mm. has the same website, everyone right. has beautiful buildings, everyone's using a pricing tool, right. and everyone's taking pictures, which means you're on a level playing field. Mm -hmm. Who wants to be on a level playing field, Corey? I right. want to have an unfair advantage in the marketplace. And now consumers are demanding more and more information, and they're demanding visual information, not just specifications below the fold. And the other thing is they want an interactive experience. And so for a dealer that is doing the same, their number one mistake is complacency mm. because the market is not slowing down and the way consumers are buying is not uh, slowing down or changing either. It's moving forward. Now would you say, because traditionally, right, I, I talk about um, often in my, in my presentations, I talk about the Ron Popeil effect. So you know who Ron Fulpeel is? Oh, so, absolutely, So Ron yes. Fulpeel is the rotisserie guy. Well, yep. he has all Set stuff. it and forget Set it. Set it and forget it, right? So I talk about that, and I think a lot of times uh, technology or things get treated that way. So, hey, you know, yeah, we need to have pictures on the website, check, set it and forget it. We'll have the, some company come in and do it and that type of thing. And then kind of it's a task that gets done, not an execution of how good we are at doing it. So what do you think, you know, what's the must-dos? for some dealers, so what, what's, like you must be doing this to have a competitive advantage. Sure, so the first thing I would do is I would suggest to any dealer, look at your website and then look at your competitor's website as if you're a consumer. Is there anything different? Is there anything special? What are the calls to action that you have? Guarantee most dealers look like everyone else and right. that is, becomes the challenge. Right. And the dealer that is going to capture a large percentage of the market is the dealer that gives more information, not less is the dealer mm. that makes it interactive, not less interactive, is the dealer that allows a totally immersive effect when the customer is viewing the VDP page. If you think about it, Corey, would you want to look at pictures or would you want to be able to walk around the vehicle and look inside the vehicle and decide, is this right for me? Right, so I mean, ultimately my opinion is, of course, at the end of the day, you know, somebody, it's not a big sight unseen purchase, unless it's an exotic or something someone knows exactly what they want. I mean, everybody eventually you know, visits the dealership, right? Sure. By and large, they're going to see it, touch it. So you, what you're trying to do is create influence 
influence the, the decision to take the next step by immersing them in the vehicle experience? Am I translating that correctly? Sure. You know, Corey, I started in the car business way back when, when mm -hmm. our front door, we stood outside the front door and we waited right. for a customer to tug at the door. That's not way back when, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you may be doing that way back when, but, but I'll take you to some places where there's 11 people standing perched outside up, ready the front to go. door. Yeah, yeah. But how do you get that traffic? The right. first door sure. that a customer tugs at now is not your front door, it's mm. your website. Right. If you can't impress them on your website, you are never going to get them to drive in and tug at your front door. Right. And how do you impress them? You give them the information that they're looking for. You know, dealers depend upon trust right, to sure. sell. The sure. only way you can have trust is transparency. Mm -hmm. By allowing that customer to drive their own experience on the dealer's website, you're giving that transparency to the customer. Show the customer what they want to see. If they don't see it, they're not coming in. And that is the transformation that we're seeing in the industry today. So talk to me about this thing, uh, VDP urgency. Sure. So w what is that designed to do and why why, why is it becoming effective? Sure, so we got that idea from two places, from Hotwire and we got it from Zillow. And what it, it very simply allows a, a, a dealership to portray to the customers, this is a hot uh, commodity. If you go on Zillow and you're looking for a rent or for a house, and it says 58 people have looked at this mm -hmm, house, mm -hmm. you say, gosh, I better, I better get on the ball with it. Or you go to Hotwire, you're trying to book a flight mm -hmm. like you probably did today or yesterday, mm -hmm. And it says only two seats left. What do you say? I've got to do something now. Right. And so the urgency counter will show uh, to the consumer how many people have looked at this vehicle and you better get on the uh, ball. Now what happens when you have a car that's like one person's looked at? Sure. <laughs> I mean, does that, is that a gift and a curse? Well, we thought, yeah, as you, would, <laughs> as you would expect, Corey, we thought of that. Okay. So the urgency counter doesn't kick in until at least, at least five people have looked at the vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Now with your technology, are you advocating a dealer take all of their in-house, take all of their merchandising in-house? Well, some dealers want to do that, right? And some dealers want to cut costs. The other thing that Spin Car allows the dealership to do is to do it all themselves, if you think about it. And we have some great third-party uh, partners that go out and take pictures every day. But if you can reduce the cost of $10, $15 per car, bring that mm. in-house, reduce the amount of time it takes to photographs. No, I still have to pay somebody? You, no, you don't have to. You could do it all internally. Or if you want to, you still use a third Are party. Are you suggesting I sign it out to, I add more stuff for salespeople to do? Well, no, <laughs> send not your, Send your letters to Bruce O'Brien here. At sure, the ab not absolutely. Not <laughs> I'll do it all. Uh, but the reality is this, that if you can reduce the amount of time mm -hmm. it takes to photograph the vehicle, right. the average spin car could be photographed in about th two to three minutes as opposed to 10 10 to 15 minutes traditional because you got to take so many photographs. If you can reduce the amount of time it goes from the lot to the web in under 10 minutes, right. that's very powerful. And if you can give your customer the power to decide whether to tug at your door or not, you're going to win. If you think about it, would you want to compete against a guy that can get his product on the market faster, more efficiently, at a lower cost, and present a better buying experience for the customer? What would happen to you eventually? But here's what I ask you. Dealers are inundated. They're inundated. I get calls, you know, we, we have a group of dealers that we consult for, a small group. Uh, it's kind of our private VIP group. But, you know, their question is, hey, call us. <clears throat> and I get these calls all day. Everybody's got a game changer. Sure. Everybody's going to, you know, break the mold, disrupt the business. H how do they, they're just so inundated with technology and add-ons and conversion tools and more VDP views. How, how, how do they decide? what is the most valuable to them? Because they can invest everywhere. They don't right? have to decide, the market mm. is deciding for them. Mm. If you think about it, the way people are buying cars nowadays, and the average dealer knows floor traffic is down, closing ratios are up. Why is that, Corey? Mm. It's because consumers are doing their research online and they're deciding before they tug at that door, as long as you don't uh, make me upset, right. I'm gonna buy the vehicle, right? right? And so they're making that decision beforehand. And that is the reason why the market is going to decide for the dealers how the customers want to purchase, see, and, and ultimately decide where to purchase that vehicle. So I ask everybody that comes on my show this question. Sure. You take out your magical crystal ball. Yep. And then I want you to predict, I want you to give me a prediction for pick whatever you want. If you want to make it five years, I'd normally say five years, but look in your crystal ball and tell me what you think is going to happen. What's the prediction that we can document on the show that Bruce O'Brien is making that where the business is going to go? Something that maybe we're not thinking about or seeing now. What's your prediction? Sure. So I would say this very simply, that the fact that the way the market is going right now is not going to stop. If you look at the evolution of the way customers decide to purchase a vehicle, 
And, and if you look at that over a 10, 15 year period of time, it's going more and more digital. If you look at the way advertising is, it's more and more digital. So our, our paradigm is very simple. We simply say to a dealer, Mr. Dealer, if you don't give the customer what they want, which is a better buying experience, more information, and able to control that process, somebody else will. And you may not feel that effect today, tomorrow, next week, but in a, a year or two, you will. It's the way the market is moving, Corey. And, and that's what we have been so successful at doing is not creating a market, but just following the trends of that consumer's desire to shop the way they want to shop. Excellent. Bruce O'Brien, Vice President of Sales, Spin Car. Thank you for joining the show today. Thank you, Corey. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Finally today, decisions, decisions, decisions. Yes, we must make them on a daily basis. At the dealership, if you are a decision maker, then those decisions, in fact, impact a lot of people. It is a task, commitment, and responsibility that most don't give enough credit to, but a commitment to growth and taking the time to not just go from the gut, but do the research, take the meetings, and even try things, even if they aren't 100% understood, is all part of creating the competitive advantage. I simply ask you to remember that the fact that your competitor isn't using the same product or service you have the opportunity to invest in isn't a negative, it's a positive. Go ahead, be first. And that simply is the way I see it. Well, that's our show for today, but here's a question. Why aren't you and your team training with me? You need to check out our on-demand training, testing, and certification program, Mosley 24-7. This online training system equips your team with the new school skills they need to start selling more cars right now. Visit Mosley247.com for more information. Also, if you have an industry colleague that could benefit from this message, please share this video with them. This has been another episode of Progressive Retail with Corey Mosley, exclusively on the CBT Automotive Network. I'll see you next week.